Hello and welcome back to Fallout 76. Today we are going to have a closer look at the 10mm submachine gun. Now I have tried these in the past when I first started playing the game and I tried it for a little bit, didn't like it, didn't think it was a good gun. And once you get your hands on a handmade or a fixer, you kind of never look back at these weapons at all. So my question is, if you get one with a good set of effects, does that make it a good gun? So what I'm going to do is I am on a custom world. I have rolled a couple of these. I'm going to test one of them as a VATS only weapon and the other one as a non VATS only weapon. So for the VATS only test, we have an anti-armor VATS critical hits do 50% more damage and 25% reduced VATS action point cost. I have this modded with a calibrated receiver for uh, extra critical shot damage, an aligned long barrel to reduce AP cost, and a quick magazine to also reduce AP cost. As far as the build goes, I do have follow through because I do expect to get some sneak attacks. I have all the commando perks maxed out along with tank killer maxed out. I have tenderizer for extra damage. I have covert operative because like I said before, I do expect to get sneak attacks. And I also have adrenaline uh, because that will help with damage against multiple enemies. Uh, there's bloody mess for extra damage. And this is a critical build. So I do have criti uh, better criticals and critical savvy. I have bird bones for extra agility, which will give me extra AP and eagle eyes for extra critical shot damage. I also am using Blight Soup for additional critical shot damage. Now these guns do have a really nice fire rate of 91 and a range of 204. So in terms of range and fire rate, they should work pretty well. It's just a matter of uh, the fact that they're not suppressed and you don't have a reflex sight for reduced AP cost. But they do pretty nice damage. I'm still in caution. That one up there still doesn't see me. He knows something's up. But uh, yeah, I can kill him rather easily. Yeah, so far this, done, this gun does really well. Uh, I'm able to stay in caution. Uh, you know, I am full health, so I don't have crazy high agility or anything like that. I'm using a full set of Secret Service, on, Secret Service armor, so... Uh, I don't have any... Oh, now I'm in danger. Let's see what happens then. Eh, still do just fine. And now I'm back into caution. But the damage from this gun is actually really nice. I have no complaints so far. Other than a little bit of lag with the game. I am trying to hide. There we go. That was not a problem at all. Now, it's one thing to sneak through a town full of enemies where you can kind of pick them off one or two at a time. Uh, this is not a gun I would choose to go into, say, Colossal Problem, just because you'd be in danger the whole time. I think the lack of a suppressor really uh, hurts the case for this being a full-time stealth weapon. But uh, I have no issue with accuracy. Uh, AP cost seems like it might be a little high. I don't know. I haven't actually had to shoot <laughs> that many shots before... Uh, Everything was dead. Fugitive has dead. All right, well, this guy's become part of a car. But everything dies even when you're in danger. Everything dies very easily with this gun. So as a... Okay, so there's my AP gone. All right, so yeah, as a VAT's only weapon, I uh, I like it so far. Let's test it. Let's test the other one. So for the non-VATS test, we are going to be using an anti-armor 25% uh, damage while aiming, 15% faster reload. And for the build, I've swap swapped out Critical Savvy and Better Criticals for Torment Tormentor and Ricochet. Since we won't be using VATS, those critical perks won't do us any good. So let's, and other than that, the build is the same. And I will be playing in first person this time because I cannot aim at all in third person. Yeah, the, the lack of a sight really, uh, unfortunately, this doesn't have a, a sight. It just has a standard one, and it makes it kind of tough to see the enemy. You do get used to it. Now, this does have a little bit of recoil. Oh, that is something else. All right, so I did mod this a little differently. I'm using a hardened receiver because I won't be using the criticals. I have a stabilized long barrel and a stabilized stock, and those should reduce recoil by quite a bit. 
and I have the same quick magazine just for faster reloads. So yeah, not being able to see your enemies when you when you aim at them is very frustrating. I'm finding. All right, let's see here. Yeah, the recoil. This thing bounces all over the place. It's very difficult to uh, to manual aim. And obviously, without outside of ats, without criticals, you are taking a lot more shots. But I do know that some people prefer to play to play without using bats. But we are taking longer to kill the enemies, and because of that, it is much more difficult to stay hidden. Now, I do have Tormentor, and I could shoot them in the legs, but usually by the time they're crippled, they are dead. Now, just, just to give you a, a view of what the recoil is like, if I were just to aim this straight ahead and pull the trigger back, and that is with the, all the mods to reduce recoil as much as possible. So trying to hold that on target is extremely difficult. All right, so here we are at Garahan Mining with some robots. And yeah, those sentry bots are a lot tougher to deal with when you don't have a... Uh... Oh, actually, that wasn't so bad. It takes a little longer when you're not able just to vats the uh, fusion core. Oh! But yeah, it's just a lot more exciting to play this way because you will be... Oh, something else is blowing up too. You'll just you just not be able to stay hidden very well with this. Because it just takes you so much longer to kill enemies. They have time to spot you, and witnesses Witnesses wake up because they hear the gunshots because you don't have a suppressor. There we go. Alright, I want to tackle something a little harder to hit using the manual aiming, and I think floaters kind of fit the bill on that. Well, that wasn't too bad. I mean, it's not too bad in this gun if you can stay hidden. Once you, there was one right here. There's one way over there. Oh, it's in here. Okay. Yeah, if you can stay hidden. Yeah, the problem is if your target moves at all, staying on target is very difficult because you can't really see them through the sight. But actually, overall, even as a manual aim weapon, I don't, I don't mind this terribly much. I would like it a lot better if you could silence. The the recoil does make it very difficult to hit things, though. I will say that. The recoil and being, you know, having your uh, target obscured by the sight make for a very challenging thing. And if that's what you're looking for, then this is definitely your gun. If you're looking for an extra challenge. And we are back to the Vats weapon and Vats build for a big enemy. Just to see how we do. I think he's vulnerable now. Yep, the AP cost is a bit high. I should have been able to empty my clip there, and I wasn't able to. Now, if you were a low health build, that would not be a problem. But he still went down all right. Okay, so what's my conclusion on this weapon? Well, what I think is if the damage is really good. I actually think the damage for especially the VATS version is actually really good. It's obviously not as much as a handmade or a fixer, but it's it's really solid. And if you could have this with a reflex sight and a suppressor, I could totally see running this as a main gun. Uh, it is It does nice damage, it has a nice fire rate, has a decent sized clip. Uh, and uh, yeah, I really like it that way. I just think it needs a couple of extra mods. And as far as the non-VATS version, I kind of have the same opinion. I actually, I mean, it is a little challenging because the recoil is quite a bit, but it's manageable. So if you had a reflex sight where you could actually see your enemies, I think that would be really good. And a suppressor, so you could actually be a little surgical and stay hidden. Uh, that could actually be a pretty fun stealth weapon. That wouldn't be my main choice, I don't think. I'd rather probably have a handmade. I think the recoil is just a little bit better. Um, but the damage on both of these is actually is actually nice. It's just missing a couple of mods to make this uh, a competitive weapon, I think. So yeah, um, this has actually performed better than I expected. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit one of the buttons down below and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Thank you very much.